This Week with Bob Mueller on News 2. This week, President Biden makes it official he will seek a second term. What's important is that we look at what we all agree upon. Governor Lee has not set a date yet for a special legislative session on public safety. We stand up for our community, safety, and democratic values. The Tennessee Three visit the White House and President Biden. I'm writing to express my support for extreme risk protection orders. Clergy members go old school, writing letters to lawmakers urging action on gun violence. The phenomenon of book bans has really uh, gotten out of control. The GOP book banning push. A look at where Tennessee stands in our This Week cover story. I'm not a politician yet, <laughs> um, but as an educator for over 32 years, I've earned the trust of parents and their children. So I say to that, if parents and students in the community have trusted me for this many years with their families, their organizations, their nonprofits, you can trust me to lead. I like to say that I'm not just going to be the mayor of the city, I want to be the mother of Nashville too. And our conversations with Nashville mayoral candidates continues as we hear from Natisha Brooks. Hello again and welcome to another edition of This Week. Governor Bill Lee expands on his call for a special legislative session on public safety, not gun violence. Area clergy write letters to lawmakers urging action on gun violence. A conversation with Natisha Brooks as we continue our interviews with Nashville mayoral candidates. The Tennessee Three visit the White House and the president. We begin with the president who announced he will seek a second term. President Joe Biden officially launching his 2024 re-election campaign, receiving a warm welcome at an event today in Washington, touting his economic plan for rebuilding the middle class. Our economic plan is working. We now have to finish the job, but there's more to do. The president releasing a video this morning that opens with images of Trump supporters engaged in the deadly January 6 attack on the Capitol. Mr. Biden stating the fight for democracy is not over. Freedom. Biden drawing a stark contrast between himself and those he called MAGA extremists who he says are lining up to take away bedrock freedoms. Dictating what health care decisions women can make, banning books and telling people who they can love. At 80 years old, President Biden is already the oldest president in U.S. history. A new NBC News survey found 70 percent of Americans, including 51 percent of Democrats, believe the president should not seek a second term. Half the voters who don't want Biden to run again say his age is a major factor. But while the president has acknowledged his age is a concern for others, in an interview with ABC's David Muir, he brushed it off as a non-issue for his performance in office. And the only thing I can say is watch me. This announcement setting up a potential rematch between Biden and former President Donald Trump, who is now 76 years old and has even less support than Biden in the poll. Trump releasing his own video after Biden's. It is almost inconceivable that Biden would even think of running for re-election. Not a lot of people are clamoring for a rematch, but I'll tell you, Democrats remember how the first one turned out and are pretty happy about the result. Vice President Kamala Harris and Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown-Jackson were prominently featured in the campaign video, appearing to send a message to voters that diversity is still a priority. And President Biden is expected to easily cinch the Democratic nomination. M. Wynn, ABC News, The White House. After facing historic expulsions, the Tennessee Three got to meet President Biden at the White House. Rashad Hudson has a look inside the day. It's an honor to have you off. Monday, President Biden welcomed Tennessee representatives Justin Pearson, Justin Jones, and Gloria Johnson to the Oval Office. You're standing up for our community, safe communities, and democratic values. After the shooting at a Nashville school that killed six people, the trio led a protest in favor of gun control on the state house floor. Republican state lawmakers responded by moving to expel them, earning the group the name the Tennessee Three. What the Republican legislature did was shocking, it was undemocratic, and it was um, without any precedent. President Biden applauded the state lawmakers for their defense of democracy and push for stronger gun laws. It is a moral issue. It is about our children. It is about our schools. After their expulsion, Jones and Pearson were reinstated by their local governments. 
is our Selma moment. This is a moment in which we have a state that um, just days after mass shooting chose to expel the two youngest black lawmakers rather than take action on common sense gun reform. The Tennessee General Assembly adjourned this year's legislative session Friday without taking major action on gun control. But these three say their movement is only growing. It's really lit a fire in Tennessee and people are motivated. Students are active and they're showing up. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson. In Tennessee, clergy members are taking up where the Tennessee Three left off, urging action on gun violence. It's an old-fashioned approach. They are writing letters to state lawmakers. Here's News 2's My Owens. With each letter. I'm writing to express my support for extreme risk protection orders. They are words they hope will turn into action. Having measures like these in place could make a large impact in preventing this all too common event of mass shootings in our state. The church, often a place for comfort, reflection and peace. Now, those typically inside have stepped out to make a change outside the Capitol. I hate to say it, but the first thing I thought when I saw everything happening at Covenant was, again, <laughs> and was sort of an acceptance of, of course, this was going to hit Nashville sooner or later. For nearly four weeks following the deadly Covenant shooting, we have heard what do we want? Gun control. and seen calls for action. And they have all been saying, do something now. Yeah. Now the ones who often lend comfort speaking up. We have watched the number of deaths due to gun violence rise dramatically. Yes. Yes. But unfortunately, our words were not heeded. Hmm. And nothing has been done by our supermajority legislature. Hours after the legislative session ended, clergy members say this isn't the last lawmakers will hear from them, hoping a special session will lead to change. As pastors, if we don't talk about how our faith impacts the real world, then I don't think we're doing our job. I implore you to keep our children and community safe and support these measures. Sincerely, Reverend Brandon Baxter. My Owens, News 2. Governor Bill Lee expanded on his decision to call a special legislative session, not on gun violence, but for what he terms public safety. State Capitol Newsroom reporter Chris O'Brien has details. Governor Bill Lee announced late Friday night he'd call a special session on public safety. What we plan to do is to work together with the General Assembly uh, to find a way that will in fact protect the broader public, protect the rights of Tennesseans, and uh, we, we believe we can do that. The governor, speaking in Chattanooga after signing the Forever Homes Act to expedite adoptions, talked about the need to enact some sort of emergency protection order for firearms. There needs to be a way to separate those who are a danger to others and to themselves from access to weapons and protect the rights, in particular Second Amendment rights, of Tennesseans. Lee will almost certainly run into a roadblock in the form of House Republicans, though Senate leadership seems a little more receptive to the idea. I don't think it's a non-starter. I think that we'll have to examine it and we'll have to have it go through the requisite committees on both the Senate and the House. House leadership put out a statement last week saying the caucus wouldn't consider a red flag law. None of us here are going to vote for red flag laws. They're going to have an ex parte hearing where the person who is the subject of that hearing doesn't even find, find out about it until it's already over. With that in mind, I asked Lee how he plans to get anything through. Well, I think what's important is that we look at what we all agree upon. Uh, that's the, the place to start. Reporters asked Lee if he had any sort of time frame for calling this special session. Says he doesn't yet, but he's planning on talking with the General Assembly members in the next few weeks to decide a time frame for that coming special session. For now in Chattanooga, Chris O'Brien. Now to our this week cover story, books are being taken off school shelves at a supercharged rate. That's according to a library expression nonprofit, Pan American found almost 1,500 books were banned during the first half of this school year. So where does Tennessee stand? Here's News 2's Adam Mincer. Pulling books from library shelves is becoming so common, researchers who track the numbers say they can't keep up. The phenomenon of book bans has really 
uh, gotten out of control. According to new data from the literary expression nonprofit Pet America, there's been a 28% increase in books banned in the first half of this year compared to last. And while not the state with the most bans this year, Jonathan Friedman says Tennessee is leading the pack, coming up with new types of laws to limit what books can go on school shelves. We've seen laws to intimidate librarians. We've seen laws to intimidate teachers uh, in a number of states, to intimidate professors in some states. And now there's this new set of laws that seems to want to intimidate um, publishers. Last week, Tennessee passed a law making it a felony for a publisher to sell, quote, obscene books to schools. This is how the sponsor described it. In that batch of books is where they found the problems, and it will be another tool to help ensure that we don't have the upset and the arguments that are going on at our school boards right now. There's a similar bill in Texas, and a Missouri law makes it a crime to give minors sexually explicit books. Pen America says these laws create a chilling effect leading teachers to not even place certain books on shelves, banning some without discussing them. Voting on them one at a time, it's taking a really long time to review all of these books and hopefully remove them from the school. Representative Lynn said this law keeps explicit content away from children. According to a new analysis by the American Library Association, the books that are most likely to be targeted are those with LGBTQ plus themes and are often labeled as pornographic or containing sexual content. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment and a conversation with Nashville mayoral candidate Natisha Brooks.